Hey guys, welcome to another great week of TSC Hustlers League, baby. I'm excited to be here with you. I'm excited to share some thoughts and some ideas that can help you to become a rock star when it comes to utilizing LinkedIn and Twitter to generate leads. We have some great content we're going to cover today. We have some great information. As you know, in past weeks, I've talked to you about using social media, but today we're going to go a little bit more in depth. As we wait for a few more people to jump into the session, I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen here, and then we can go ahead and just wait for a minute. I know we had some login challenges. Guys, please forgive me. You don't know how frustrating it's been on this side. Um, just totally, totally, totally sorry about that. Um, if you're here, I want you to go ahead and say, uh, hello. Let's go ahead on the right-hand side and let me know you're here. Look forward to talking to you to share some thoughts with you guys today. But I'm waiting for a couple more minutes as we get uh, actually one more minute. Just wait for a couple more people to jump in. I know I'm one of them was having a challenge. I'm logging in. Sam, you're here. All right. I'm just gonna wait for a couple more minutes. I know some more people are jumping into the session here today. I want to ask you guys, what CRM do you use? I had one of my, um, I had somebody ask me about that. One of my friends was asking me what CRM recommendations. And I, there's so many different uh, varieties. We're actually going to do a blog post on it, but I'd love to learn from you. What CRM do you use? Go ahead and let me know about that. All right, want to get a chance? We're going to get started now. Um, John, contractually, that's another one, John. How do you like that one? Uh, I have a couple, of, I've heard about that one as well. Um, I haven't tested it out myself, so I can't speak to it too much. I'm going to, I'm going to look into it. I don't know if they have a free version for it, but if they do, I'm going to look into testing it out because, again, it's another one that I can recommend does contractually do they have a uh, marketing piece with that john or is it just a crm that you guys take advantage of if so just would love to learn and to just kind of see what's there with it and how it works um maybe i can watch uh, i can jump on one of your sessions uh, or we can jump on a call separately and you can show me how it works and take and give me a test drive of it but i'll be i'm very interested to see how that works Good so far, probably a few things that could be tweaked. Okay. Do you know if do they have an email marketing side or is it just mainly the CRM? You're probably just using mainly the CRM. Okay. Right now I am using Active Campaign for my CRM, excuse me, for my uh, my email marketing side. I just my wife, she has a business. Um, she sells pillows and she's just getting that set up, so we just got her convert fox which is an email marketing side um it also has a basic kind of crm but not really no actually it doesn't have the crm it's just for email marketing side but we use active campaign internally here um, for our emailing and we're also using hubspot for crm but i'm going to combine both of those both of those uh, two and i'm probably going to use mostly um active campaign for everything all right well this is great but today guys Thank you so much for your insights. Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit more about using LinkedIn and using Twitter for lead gen. In the past, again, I shared with you some ideas, some ways that you can connect with folks, you can you know, start building some value, you can stand, uh, stand out from the crowd, but we are going to dive deeper in some strategies today. I'm, I'm just, this is really just gonna be a lot of different strategies, a lot of different ideas that you can try. I am not gonna, uh, I'm gonna open up the, just pull up my LinkedIn and just gonna show you some of these things and just walk you through to it. So right now, so far, how many of you, are you guys on LinkedIn? If you're on LinkedIn, you have a profile. I don't care if it's just like not even great or if it's not, it's just blah. Go ahead and just let me know. If you're on LinkedIn right now, do you use LinkedIn right now? 
just go ahead and let me know and post your profile here. I'll, I might use it as, later on in this as an example. Do you use LinkedIn? So go ahead and, and do that. Trent, all of you guys, okay, you guys are doing that. Let me post a link to mine. If you're not connected with me, you can go ahead and do so. We're going to spend some time. We're going to talk about some of these things here because here's what I've come to realize. I was just scraping along. Um, I'm telling you, man, for the longest, just scraping along with LinkedIn. There's so much more that I could do with LinkedIn, but I haven't done with it. But here, I've gotten some money recently from LinkedIn, and then that that just kind of wakes me up, right? Once you get that money, you're like, yes, this makes sense. I want to keep using it. I want to, I want to use it over and over again. So hopefully by today, by the time we get done, we can help you. But I can tell you the biggest frustration that I see that salespeople have is that they don't know where to get started with LinkedIn. If that's the case with you, just go ahead and say yes, because it was with me. I didn't know where to get started with LinkedIn. There's so many things you can do. And I thought if I just connected with people, then all of a sudden the money will come in. And that didn't work. That was an epic fail. <laughs> I was selling document management services. And before that, I was selling into uh, managed IT services. And what I would used to do is just connect with people. And then I would say, well, it doesn't work. It doesn't seem like there's people are not coming to me and asking, can, I, can you buy something from, uh, can they buy uh, my product or my service? And that's not how LinkedIn works. There's, all it is is building relationship and strategies. And here's one of the challenges that I see too, that I actually, that I had when it came towards um, using LinkedIn. I have and had a lot of connections and I didn't engage with them. And I thought that if I did connect with somebody and if I did engage with them, that all of a sudden I'll see results overnight. But that results take time. It take weeks, it takes sometimes months. And what I'm giving you today, I'm just gonna give you some simple little things, um, what you can do to make, make it better. John, I'm gonna show you today. If you have your profile, if you just go to LinkedIn, log into LinkedIn, get your profile and a uh, link and just post it like I did here with mine. I want to I want to look at some of yours and we can give some ideas and we can and some stuff that can help you guys. I want to by the time we get done today, I want you to have a clear plan. I'm going to give you some clear things. I'm going to be a little bit more heavy on the side of LinkedIn than Twitter because some of you I know it, it, I just want to rather go more in depth with you. I'll give you some ideas on Twitter and I'm going to give you some specific takeaways that you can apply um, as we go further but LinkedIn man is the beast. <coughs> Woo! I'm sitting here talking so much, get choking up on my own spit, getting my dry throat. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Your accountability partner and goals. We have absolutely, we have, this is week number nine. So we have three sessions left after today, three sessions. And I can't believe it's ending so quickly, but I want you guys to go back in, log into the portal, watch past recordings. Everything that, I'm, that I've taught you up till now, it comes it comes down to you acting on them. It does you no good. It will do you no good at all if you're just, um, you know, watching the session live and then that's it. You have to go back in and, and watch the recording. When you do that, you're going to see a better result. Set goals. Connect with your accountability partner. If you haven't connected with your accountability partner yet, it's okay. I want you to fix it. Just go ahead and reach out to your accountability partner and just let them know, you know, hey, I'm, I'm going back through the recordings or I'm trying to get better at this. Can you help me out with it? I want you guys to do so. All right, we're not gonna have anyone in a hot seat today. I'm gonna hog up the time and I'm just gonna go straight into the nitty gritty. This is the basic sales process that I gave you. It's like, again, if you, if you look at like barbecue sauce, I love barbecue, love some barbecue. If you guys come down here, we're gonna take you some good barbecue spots and we're gonna eat well. <laughs> I remember one year I did door to door security and I was in Memphis, Tennessee. I gained like 10 pounds. Of course, man, Memphis has some good barbecue, and I would go out there almost like a couple nights a week and eat, and it wasn't good. <laughs> it was good food, but it wasn't good for my health. <laughs> um, but it was crazy that I gained so much weight. But in this example, in a barbecue sauce, the base of most barbecue sauce is ketchup. This, imagine if this is your base of your sales process. You take it, you tweak it. Your sales process may go in a little bit more in depth. It may go a little bit longer than that, depending on what you sell. Some of you sell stuff that are shorter. So your sales process may be just, you know, you find somebody, you build value, get them a proposal, close the deal. But it, yours, some of us may have deeper and longer uh, sales process. So take this as an example, utilize it. But we're going to go into, we're going to tie back to that. And last week, if you watched last week's session, I shared with you about it. Each stage in the sales process, there should be content that you should be giving your prospects. Every single stage, there should be some piece of content that you've given out to your prospect that helps you to follow up um, and to continue the conversation. 
So let's go dive into LinkedIn, baby. So first off, you share with me. I'm going to share, pull up some of your profiles here um, for those who want me to look at your profiles. You share with me some of your profiles, and I'm going to break some things down. The main thing with LinkedIn from the very, very get-go is that you need to tailor your LinkedIn profile to your ideal customer. Tailor your LinkedIn profile to your ideal customer. Because what we tend to find, LinkedIn, when it first started off, the way it worked was like salespeople or everyone and a mom. I did it too when I was in college. My profile was just a, a, you know, me and my past work experience. It was like basically a resume. That's really what LinkedIn was for such a long time. But it's more than that. It's evolved from just a resume builder. If you were to land on my profile, could you tell what I do and who I serve? I'm gonna, that's not a rhetorical question. I want you to see, look at it. If you land on my profile, and this is the first thing you see, can you see clearly who I serve and what I do? And I can give you some hints. I did a little background thing there. I did a little image in the back. You see the, the dude talking on the phone. That's the same thing as my website. That's a con continuity. I wanted to continue the same feel from the website onto my LinkedIn. I help new and struggling sellers close more deals. That's my message, simple. I also have some keywords I want to point out here for you that you can see. In my actual name, the sales evangelist, you see I use some keywords right away. I use sales trainer. People usually search for that. Sales coach. That's another keyword. Podcast host. I do podcasts. But this one is about Donald. And this is also another important thing. You want to make sure that your profile is not just all business. You want to have a little play in there. Staycation addict. We're in Florida. We do a lot of staycation. Sam probably know about this, especially um, that you know you're up in the northern part of our state. There's some beautiful stuff up there. You know, we do a little staycation. You can find out a little bit more about me there for in, in in this. But this is the very, 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 very first thing. Uh, LinkedIn is kind of like Google with this SEO capabilities. The keywords is the key, and that's where I got recognized recently. I remember some. I told you guys one of the, in the a guy told me that he found me because of a search. They just searched for a term. Um, and then all of a sudden sales coach and then I popped up because of my profile. It's riddled with sales coaching stuff. So that's the very first thing. Tailor your profile. Let me put uh, take a peek at one of yours here. I'll give you some ideas. You guys okay? It's Sam and John, are you okay with me giving suggestions that we can use with yours? Um, if you're not, no worries. If you're okay with getting some suggestions, some feedback, let me know and I'll post yours. And then we can go through them and share some thoughts and ideas as well. All right. So that's what the very first thing I want you to do. Tailor your tailor your profile towards your customer. Don't think of it as don't um, don't think of it as just again the resume tool. You want to look at it as your way of making sure when people flag you down, they grab your attention. So the keywords are the key are important here. So I'm gonna pull up some of your profiles and go through some of the stuff in just one second. So what I would like you to do right now, just take 20 seconds. List five keywords your ideal customer will, will use when looking for your service. Five keywords your ideal customers will will use when looking for your service or your product. So let's say if I if I'm in the uh, manufacturing space, let's say I'm just trying to think of something. It's like an easy example. Let's say I'm in a construction space and I build houses. So maybe I'll look for contract. Maybe I'll look up words like contractors or um, home builder or maybe um, you know. Uh, new homes or something like that. Just think of those keywords your prospect will look for when they're looking at building, uh, looking at getting your product or service. If I was in the office furniture space, maybe I'll look up office furniture. Maybe I, I will look up office furniture company. Maybe I'll look up um, terms like uh, desk or you know whatever. I'm just trying to throw out random stuff. Obviously you can tell that's not my industry, right? But think about the five keywords your ideal customer will use. All right. I want to also point out long tail keywords. These are more specific. So if I'm in the landscaping industry, people might search landscaping. Yeah, that's general. You search landscaping on, on LinkedIn, you probably get like thousands of different people. But what if I searched Arizona land, landscape services? Do you think that will get better results? Yeah, I'm going to get more focused results. And that's where long tail keywords will come in play. So that's something that you want to be mindful of when you're designing and when you're crafting your profile, because a profile will serve for multiple things. It will serve as one for you to stand out to your prospects, but for two, for you to stand out potential partners as well. 
So you want to de uh, decorate it with some of those things. And I'll show you how you do that. Profile message is about you, but not about you. <laughs> Simple, right? Let me explain. So I'm going to actually pull up my LinkedIn profile here and let's do, 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 do. Let's just switch the screen and pull up. One second, my friends. One second. All right. We're just going to go straight into the live sucker here. All right. So several things so far that you want to see. This part of your LinkedIn profile is a very, 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 very important. So often that I find what people will do is that they make it all about them, right? And it will be just this huge thing talking about me and why I'm so awesome and, and so forth. So I, you do want to talk about you but talk about you in the light of your customers. When they read it, they should be able to say, okay, well, I see how Don will help me. Talk about it in that sense. So talk, it, it, it's about you, but not about you. It's about what you can do for your customers. So for instance, the first line of mine, I evangelize effective ways, salespeople and entrepreneurs. So who do I service? Keywords, salespeople and entrepreneurs can find more qualified leads, close more deals and make money, make more money. In the first line there, you can, you can see who I service and how I do it. Um, it's me, who I service and what I do specifically for them. I do this through motivating sales training, online courses, one-on-one -on -one coaching, workshops, seminars, and dynamic keynotes presentation. Within the first three lines there, you know what I do, who I service, and how I help them, right? Then I go into being more personal. Like most of you, tying into them, I've been, in, I've done all kinds of sales, hoping to make a lot of money. Unfortunately, that didn't happen right away. Lost plenty of deals, I had a fear of rejection, and I just wasn't too good at selling. So I'm just basically, I'm just laying out all these things that tie back to my, my ideal, uh, my ideal customer. As you keep going further, you see some, you can read through it, but I tailor it to just message really around them, how I help them, how I've been in their shoes. Um, if you, at the very bottom, like right here, I said, if you're a salesperson needing help to make more money or an entrepreneur looking for a dynamic keynote speaker or someone who uh, can train your sales team, and help them increase revenue, feel free to call me. And I left my phone number there. I'll be happy to assist. And then here's another thing that I've done. Specialty, I put some keywords here. So some of my specialties, 20 proven habits, these are like things that I, um, like key, uh, keynote to uh, topics that I can speak on, business development, social selling, blah, blah, blah. So I hit all of those. The other thing that I encourage you to do, LinkedIn now has this feature, it's amazing. I could tell you all the stuff about Donald, how cool I am, but why not have your customers do it? So I had a video that I uploaded here. If you click on this, it will take them to, and it's, there we go. It's not even set up properly. So it's not going through the webinar here. I need to fix that. Um, but you click on it and ideally <laughs> it will pop up the video and the link must be broken. And then you can watch the video of the client testimonial. So instead of me telling you about this, the client is actually telling you about it. But that's another part, which is just right here inside your, your LinkedIn profile. Take advantage of that. You need to look at ways that you can best um, ways that you can do it to help grow your business um, and help you help people find you. All right. So let's pull up someone so far. Sam, we pull your profile up here and we're just going to do some live work with it. All right. So, Sam, first off, your name is great. Looks right there. Simple account executive at Fairway Outdoor Advertising. Great. So one of the things that I'll show you, I would encourage you to take advantage of, Sam, you can do is put some keywords in there. Account executive is good at Fairway Outdoor Advertising. That's good as well. But you can see that you're redundant right here. Fairway, Fairway Outdoor Advertising. Where do you work? Fairway Outdoor Advertising. Take advantage. You only have so much character, so take advantage of that. So maybe you could take off account. You can probably, if you want to keep account executive, but it's such a, it's a generic term as well. So maybe you can say account executive, um, helping small businesses, put some keywords in there. So some of the keywords you probably came up with were small businesses, advertising, growth. So I might say um, account executive helping small businesses grow their business, uh, helping small business get more attention. Or you can take advantage of stuff that I did and just put some little dashes. So your time, maybe account executive, then put some stuff here that tied back to you, outdoor advertising, small business growth, um, local advertising, and then something about Sam, um, outdoor enthusiast or whatever. But it's it's about you, something personal about you, but the keywords that your clients 
are are looking for. So if that makes sense, just go ahead and drop a yes and let me know about that. We can find some more information about you there. And then your bio, I'm not gonna get a chance to read through all of this, but you know, it's fairly simple. I'm a recent graduate from the University of Georgia, University of Georgia with bachelor's in communication studies along with you know, Zev scholarship and so forth. These are great, Sam, but again, I don't, in, in the most respectful way, you're my friend and you guys are here, but as a buyer, I don't care about that. What I care about is how is that going to tie back to me? How is that going to help me? So you can use some of those keywords. You know, recent graduate in communication studies. I've worked, uh, uh, you know, or you don't even, now you're in the business world. You don't necessarily need to, do, need to do this anymore. You probably had this while you were in college or right when you just got out of college trying to get your first job. You could probably have some of this further down in your profile, but you can just say, like, um, I'm dedicated. I am a big fan of small business growth. I've worked working as an account executive with Fairway or working as an account executive. I help small businesses find their ideal customers and to get attention that they need. I help them to you know, grow and just talk about how your business do that or how you do that. We do that through three main ways, outdoor billboards. We also do that through um, social media and we also take advantage of door to door strategies. These are things that are often overlooked but help companies grow. One of my clients is XYZ. I remember when they came in and they didn't have anything, but we helped them and their church just prospered. Or I've taken these same strategies and used them while I was in college when I helped to develop a, a ministry program. No one knew about it, but now it's nationwide through student pastors. That's like amazing stuff. It's like, wow, this guy knows a thing or two about marketing and about getting people's attention. So that's what I'd share. Same thing you look like here, you have a, your e-profile. Um, again, probably this was when you were first back at school, but it looks like it's not sourced. Something is not going on. Maybe it's LinkedIn um, that's having an issue there. So that's what I'll share with you right away with that. Um, John, probably have similar thing as well. Share that with you. Pull up John's profile. Look at that handsome dude there. And this is another thing you guys can take advantage of. Free real estate, baby. You see this here, right back here? What's the difference between mine's and your, mine and yours? I took advantage of free real estate because LinkedIn only gave me so much text. You can use a tool called Canva, C-A-N-V-A. -A. If you know about Canva, I'm pretty sure most of you probably know about Canva, but that's where I do all of my design, my, 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 my graphics and stuff like that. So take advantage of Canva. You can create a LinkedIn backdrop, but you can put something here that ties about your business. Again, I'll, I wanted to get some more keywords put in there. I wanted to get some more, when people uh, jumped on my stuff, helping new and struggling salespeople close more deals. Maybe you have a picture of your company. John, you might say helping contractors uh, become more successful or whatever. Same thing, sales and management. That's good, but it's a little bit more than that. That doesn't tell me necessarily what you do. Um, great school, by the way. Woohoo! <laughs> so um, you can tell me a little bit more. That's the school I went to as well, guys. <laughs> so you can take a bet. You can tell me about some of the other things that you do, just like I did with Sam, some of those keywords. Maybe you put... Um, you know, uh, about working with contractors or um, uh, see like sales and marketing whiz or use something that's going to grab people's attention. When people see sales evangelists, it stands out. So maybe you can just say um, contractor growth expert. That's a great one. Or small uh, contract firm growth expert. Um, we see that you work at CEB already down there. And then you just list some of those terms like uh, vernal contract um helping uh, like vernal contractors, um, electricians or whatever, just different keywords that your con your industry people will take advantage of or will look at. I'm gonna show you, do something else with John and show you here as well. But the same thing with you, John, as well. I, I like your the fact that you're talking about some of your stuff here and you know your family, which is nice. But again, as a buyer, it doesn't necessarily tie back to me. How can you create a simple, two paragraphs, three paragraphs that just tie back to how about you helping me. That's all that comes from there. The other thing that I'll share with you guys when it comes towards connecting with people, I'm going to show you with a link here. Um, but I, actually, I want to, let's not deviate. I, I won't distract you from that right now. But that's some of the things I'll share with you first off right there. Um, branch manager here, you can put some more details. Specifically, John, what I would like for you to do is tell me don't necessarily have to tell me about your your role there, but tell me about things that you have done, people that you help, or accomplishments that you've had at that at that organization. So 
some of the things that I did with mine here, do, 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 do. As, a, as a sales chief evangelist, I talk about what I do at TSC. Um, when I worked with this company, I they can see what I did. I actively developed Raven fan opportunities for API with, organiz, um, with organizations both in the private and public sector designed to go paperless and increase in efficiencies. I didn't go through all of my different tasks, but I talked about what I did. If I did something significant like I grew the company, uh, the sales, my you know grew, blew my my quota by you know 50 percent. Nobody cares about that. But if what if I was to say I helped over f uh, 300 com uh, clients to um, discover a paperless solution, or I was able to help reduce e paper efficiencies in the average school district by three percent, then that those are some things again that's relatively important. Apex, I did door-to-door -door security, my students' body presidency, uh, marketing stuff. It goes into some of these other things, but I talk about how what how my experience there helped my ideal customers. You know what I mean? So those are some of the other things that I would recommend that you check out and, and do with your profile. We're going to come more in depth with that. But any questions so far that you guys might have? Any questions that you, you might have so far regarding um, creating your – Tailoring your profile. That's the, the very first thing. Tailoring your profile. Any questions you have on that? All right. If you have any questions, just go ahead and post it. Sorry, I'm trying to pull up the next part of my presentation on here. Okay. Man, we're going to get down to some more nitty gritty. I wish we can spend, I probably have to do like a couple sessions with this. I'll tell you, there's so much to do with LinkedIn. Recommendations. This one is another part that you guys need to take advantage of. Man, I'm telling you, LinkedIn makes it so easy at times to grow business, right? Let me do this and see if it will work. Sorry, guys. I keep switching the screen on you. But LinkedIn recommendation, if you don't know about LinkedIn recommendation, this is another simple way. These are things that you can do right now to help your profile become a little bit more, uh, to, to just help your profile get some beef. It's not even the day-to-day -day strategy stuff that you can take advantage of yet. It's just stuff to get you more beef. I am slacking on my recommendation. So for instance, all of you guys that are here, I know about you. I know that you've worked, you know, what you're working and doing stuff like that. I need to give you recommendations. So I'm going to create a little recommendation for you to talk about you. But what happens with LinkedIn, as soon as I offer to give somebody, as soon as I give a recommendation, then LinkedIn tells me that I can um, see if it comes down. If, as soon as I give a recommendation to someone, then all of a sudden LinkedIn will tell that person, hey, you need to give a recommendation. So if I was to create a recommendation, ask for a recommend, you can ask for one, but I just recommend you give one. Um, who you want to ask for a recommendation from? So say if I want to ask. Christina, she's kind of cute. That's my wife. Uh, I want to ask her for a recommendation. You know, tell her to give me a recommendation about my time at the sales evangelist or somewhere else. She can go ahead and do that. She'll get a notification. But the best way to get a recommendation is by give a recommendation. Um, you, it's so easy. Uh, five recommendations that I had given here. Just, just write a recommendation to someone. Think about somebody, go to their profile, and offer to give them a recommendation. And when you offer to give them a recommendation, they'll get a prompting in return. And they'll they'll give you one, um, create one for you. So that's how I recommend you do it. Instead of asking, give a recommendation. Um, the more recommendations you give, the more you're going to receive. So all of your current customers, can you go out and give them a recommendation? Absolutely, you should. Find some of the people that you service right now, some of your top customers, and just give them a recommendation. Talk about their business, right? Talk about some of the things. Let me see if I can pull it up here and just show you live how I can give that asked to be recommended, um, given. I already gave her one, so it's not going to work. But anyways, you get the point. But you can go ahead and, and give them a recommendation. And when you give them a recommendation return, they're going to naturally reciprocate and give you one back. So the easiest thing to do, if you want to get a, a simple action step, Find your top five customers, Top your top five customers. That's it. That's all I'm asking you to do. And do one a week. Write a simple recommendation. I had a podcast episode to talk about it. You, you, know, you, don't, you just want to give some stuff that they do. Make them look good to their potential buyers. If you do that, they're going to be so happy. They're going to love you. Um, so do that. Easy, easy, peasy stuff. All right. 
Next thing I want you to do, besides recommendation, is profile views. Oh my goodness, a money pack. This is another one that's an easy, easy thing that you can take advantage of every single day as you're out there hustling and doing your bustling and, and stuff. So if I was to go down to my, my dashboard here, your dashboard, you'll see that I've had 309 people look at my profile, post views. So all the posts that I share, 220 views over the past, I think this is a, a certain day period here. I think it's like 90 days. And then 147 search appearance. So because of my keyword, people were searching for Donald Kelly and they saw or searching for sales training or sales coach or whatever. And they saw me 147 times. I popped up in the searches 147 times. I want you to click on the view uh, people that viewed your profile. An easy, 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 easy area here how you can use LinkedIn. All you do is look at these people. If you have the paid version, I just cancel my paid version. I use it every once in a while. I don't, for the most part, a lot of stuff that I'm doing, I don't even necessarily need to get a paid version, but you can take advantage of it. Um, and you can, I can reactivate my premium there. It's $79 a month, but it's worth it because you can get some good leads. But for me, I just use some of the basic stuff. So this will go away in like a couple of days, right? It will show you when somebody first look at your profile. And this is a good reminder. So if somebody looks at your profile, you can, you know, you can connect with them. So Ira, Ira Pastor, look at my profile. He's a CEO of BioCork. So that is a cool, that's a cool thing, right in my wheelhouse, right? A CEO, a business owner, and somehow he is looking at my profile because you know something real dealing with sales. So I can reach out to him. You need to reach out to these people. It's an easy thing you do. One of the basic things you can do is go ahead and click on his profile. Without me doing anything, just like how I had a you know, people who viewed my profile, he's going to get the same thing. He's going to get an email for the day or something and say, these people have viewed your profile and Donald Kelly's going to be one of them, right? I see that we know some people here with some mutual connection, which is, which is awesome. So I can take look at those and I can probably ask for one of those people to give me an introduction to him. Or I can just simply, I don't even have to go down that route. I can just simply reach out to him and just connect with them, message him, right? So I can just see some basic stuff about him there. Executive Council Chief Global Officer, um, just a member of Council of the, uh, on the Future of Human uh, Enhancement. So dude has some boards that he take advantage of. He's doing some great things. See, uh, Chief Executive Officer, member of Board of Directors. Dude's doing some great things. So I can simply drop a little message, and this is what I would share with you that I did that I, with people. Most people... The majority of salespeople don't do that. Don't do don't do what I just showed you. They don't take advantage of that viewed. Some people, those who do say something, those who do reach out to the prospect, or let's say I reach out to Ira, this is what the majority of salespeople say. Hi, um, whatever his name is, um, I say or you know, want to say something. I say, and what I put here this was they can they'll say something about their company. You know, I say I say about me 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 me. But you can say I saw you looked at my profile. We sell X, Y, Z, and it is an awesome, it's awesome because of one, two, and three. So they'll go into these different features. This is why we're awesome. Then they'll go down and talk about, I would love to set up a time to tell you more about it. Are you free for a call? And you see those spammers, and you just kind of like, oh, boy, I almost want to talk to this person, and you don't look at their profile. But what if somebody came around and, and did something different? What if they came and shared some, some added insights to you? What if they were to give you some more value? Um, what if they were able to bring something new to the table? Then you're going to stand out, right? You might say, thanks for checking out my profile, Ira. And I'm not going to say, hi, Ira. I'm just going to say, Ira, thanks for checking out my profile. I got a chance to review your profile as well. And I see we know some of the same folks. P.S., how did you get in get into the HVAC industry? Now he's not in HVAC, or I see that he's on a lot of board. Like, P.S., how did you get a part of so many different boards? That might be something that he stand out with, or maybe I name one of the specific boards that he's a part of. I might say, um, P.S., how did you get involved with me? Let's, come on, LinkedIn. How did you get involved with the uh, member of, uh, nope, let's go back up here. What's the one? How did you get involved with member of the um, Council of the future, future of Human Enhancement? It's something that he's probably passionate about. This isn't, you know, he's been a part of this board for a year now, a year and two months. It's something fresh. Or maybe executive counsel, chief global officer. He's with the World Academy of Medical Sciences. 
Like, how long? You, how, how do you like being a part of the World Academy of uh, Medical Scientists? Think about something from their profile. They give you all the answers that you could tie back to. Uh, perhaps there's something else that he does or did that I can do, uh, that I can recommend him on. He had publications, so maybe I can read one of the publications that he had, and I can share something about it. I love your publication on XYZ. It looks remarkable. Um, see that you're in the greater Philadelphia area. Uh, go how. Go Eagles, you guys are doing a great, you know, great thing. So a great team right now. So whatever it is, you can find a way to make that conversation. All I'm doing is trying to break the ice, but I'm not trying to be like everybody else and just say, well, somebody looked at my profile and nothing happened. I want to be that somebody looked at my profile and then I'm able to connect with them, then I'm able to take advantage of it. Because ideally, if my profile is optimized right, if I tailor my profile, even if it doesn't have to be anything too crazy, because optimize sound like uh, one of those tricky words at times that make you think, oh my goodness, I have to do so much work. But even if my profile is just the basics that I shared with you, with those keywords, your your subject heading um, right underneath your name, and then also the little message you talk about how you help potential customers, even if you have that, you're standing out way more than other salespeople. And then as a natural byproduct, they saw your profile for some reason it's your moral obligation to reach out and continue the conversation because you may be able to help them. Maybe they're shy too and they're like, oh, I don't want to be able to bug them. Maybe they're thinking maybe they're going to reach out to me if the, um, you know, and, and I'll go from there. Perhaps they're doing research. Why wait for them to say something and that they you know, raise their hand and say, I want to buy your product. Why don't you start a conversation? Be an adult. So that's what I recommend that you take advantage of. Uh, we Here's another one. That I would share with you. Uh, say thanks for checking out my profile. I got a chance to review your profile as well and see we knew some of the same folks, i.e., David Smith, Jana, Jana Jones, etc. Out of curiosity, as a sales manager, what is the biggest issue you see with new reps? If I was to ask you that question, you looked at my profile. Obviously, you have something that you're interested in, something of mine you're interested in. So if that's the case, I, I you know it's it's okay. You, you know I'm not being spammy. I'm not selling anything. I'm just having a conversation. I see that you're a sales manager, and I'm trying to call, start a conversation. What are the biggest issues you see with sales reps? And then she, you know the person might answer back and say, well, Donald, great. Yeah, we do know David. I do know Jenna. Um, they're great individuals. Um, how do you know them? I say, well, I, you know, whatever. And then she might say, well, the, I, to answer your question, the biggest issues that we have with new sales reps is that they get they have the fear of rejection fear of rejection so now let's think about this if you watch last week's session what did i talk about i'm going to go back to it it's something it's easy easy peasy last week we talked about following up right and i spoke to you specifically about having a lead or a piece of content for every stage of the sales process so this one is an outbound this is new they didn't call me yeah they looked at my profile and we're starting a conversation but let's say right around here, what are some contents that I can offer to sales managers who have teams of sales reps? Maybe I have a piece of content on rejection. Do I? Yes, I do. I have over 700 different episodes. So perhaps one of those sessions can tie back to that. So what if? What do you think if I was to take that piece of episode about overcoming fear of rejection and then give it to her? It's my early stage thing, right? My early stage piece of content that I'm going to give out. So I might reply back to my new found friend and say, yes, uh, Jenna is awesome. We met when I was working at XYZ company. Very, very thought, thoughtful individual. Um, I find the same thing with sales, with sales reps. Specifically, I had the same problem as well. I was afraid of rejection. I did a podcast episode on it. I think you will like point number two and point number three. That's what helped me as a rep. Share it with your reps and tell, let me know what you think. Now I give her that piece of content. I am engaging in a conversation. She's going to go back to my website and on that blog page or on that podcast episode page, there's going to be a piece or an entrance for her to download something. Maybe she's going to download the full transcript of that episode or maybe she's going to download a guide that I had how to overcome rejection or maybe she's going to download a guide how to coach your new sales reps. That's going to be on that page. And now she's gonna. I'm gonna have her email address. You ding, ding, ding. You see what I'm saying? I just got a lead, and all I did was I reviewed some of my profile. I, I made my profile with keywords. Somebody came to my profile. They looked at it. I responded to that individual, and because I responded to that individual with a thought-provoking question, 
So some of you say you don't know how to use it. That's all you're doing. Just ask questions. Ask a thought provoking question. Use the same question over and over because if these people are business owners or say they're contractors, John, you might say maybe I'm an electrical contractor, right? And my uh, my profile was tailored towards contractors or you know somebody in that industry. Perhaps then in my conversation with them, I might ask, what's the biggest challenge? So you might think, what's the biggest challenge contractors have? Is finding quality parts or maybe um, being able to bid on job, getting jobs that they bid on. So then maybe you can give up, do a blog post like as your entry piece of content, you know, five different things that you can do, 10 different things you can do to, to win uh, contracts. You can ask your current contractors, your current customers, what's the biggest secret that you guys have for winning deals? They might say, give value, might say, don't be the cheapest. They might say, you know, uh, you know, be their friend, whatever it is. Take those and put them in a simple blog post. That's all you're doing. Could be a 500 word blog post, 300 words. But now you have a blog post, a piece of content that you can use as an entry level content. So then now once you get into these conversations on LinkedIn and your profile is optimized towards these people, all you're gonna say next is like in your question, out of curiosity, uh, what uh, what are your what's your biggest advice or what do you do right now? What's a what's your biggest trick on or your biggest strategy to win deals or um, just, just thought, bring a question that you're going to respond to. That's all we're trying to do is just grab their attention. Um, besides losing out on, uh, besides say not finding leads, when you get a deal, what's the biggest problem that you're facing as a contractor? We're facing this kind of problem. We're facing this. I'm, I'm losing because of, uh, you know, because of price or whatever. So then maybe you can share that link with them. Say, I, I feel, I know what you're going through because a lot of the contractors we work with, especially um, electric, electrical contractors and so forth, they find that they they lose out because they're getting low ball. But here's a, a, a blog post that we did. I interviewed or I got advice from about X amount of uh, reps, X amount of contractors just like you and the ones who are winning some deals, here are some of the things that they're, um, they're using. I like number four, it's a very interesting one, and number two. So then now they're gonna say, what is number four and what's number two? They're gonna click on it, they're gonna go to your website, they on that web page just simply have a download or an email capture thing. More than likely, they're going to leave their stuff. They're going to grab your attention. But then you, you can also you have the authorization to follow up. So then maybe tomorrow or in two days or in three days you follow up with them. How did you like that blog post? And it's a way that you can continue the conversation. If I I've been blabbering for a few minutes here. It, does this all make sense to you guys? Is if it makes sense, just simply say yes or Tell me one piece of advice if you've gotten so far that you are not doing right now with relevant in reference to LinkedIn. So one piece of advice that you got so far that you can take and apply that you're not doing right now in reference to LinkedIn. While you're doing that, I'm gonna take a sip of water. Have my nice lemon water here. All right. Now you might be thinking too, well, Donald, what if no one looks at my profile? Well, funny you should ask. Because <laughs> you know I got a question, for, you know I got a solution for that too. Funny you should ask. All right. I'm going to jump to that. Yeah, Brian, five to seven person. He said, yeah, my profile needs some work. Guys, if any of you need some help with your profiles, man, you know you got your boy right here, man. I get offended when I don't hear from you sometimes. Send me a LinkedIn message or a Facebook or whatever. If you want some advice, start tweaking your profile. Let me jump in there and help you out. I'm I'm here for you. If any of you know me, you know that I, I, I respond. Maybe late, but I respond. I'll respond to the emails and stuff like that. Um, I like to be personable. So if you need help, I'd be more than willing to help. Any of you connected with me on LinkedIn originally? Did, did some of you find me and then reach out to me on LinkedIn originally? If so, you probably see this. When someone connects with me on LinkedIn, this is what I do. I say it, I use a, and a spoiler alert, I like to personalize stuff, but I also realize that I need to work smarter, not harder. So. <laughs> I use a generic personalized message. Um, yeah, Brian is an all-star. 
So on LinkedIn, when I when somebody connects with me, let's go back to my LinkedIn profile and I give you a perfect example here of how this has worked over the past little bit. Um, let's go to my messages. Let's go to our gal Laura. Now she's becoming a lead for our com for for me. So this is what happened with Laura. But yeah, so to answer the question again, can't give you all this good stuff. So to answer the question when I said, you know, what if I need to uh, what if no one's looking at my profile? What you should do is find a list of ideal customers that you have and then go ahead and look at their profile. So let's give an example. I'm go over to John's. John, who's an ideal customer for you? You guys might say, I'm just going to guess for you, John. Okay, so let me try to do a search. Say keyword. I'm going to say contract. Um, night location. I'm gonna say at Utah, new field exploration. So let's. I'm just gonna do a generic search here, real quick. Contractor. Did I do my location already? Utah. Um, I know you're not in Provo, but just follow the example here. You can probably do the, the same idea. Um, put Vernal, Utah. Vernal. I spell in Vernal, right? Vernal, Utah. I'm just trying to get some specifics. LinkedIn don't want to work with me with that. All right, so let's just say if I... If I did that right, did something like that. Um, industries, I can put, let's just say construction, right? So you have over 200 people that popped up in that area. These are contractors in the Provo area, uh, uh, apprentice general contractor, general contractor, uh, Benjamin Hickman. So all of these people here, and all I'm gonna do is just go ahead and look at their profile. Look at their profile. And then what's going to happen? They're going to get the little notification that Donald looked at their profile. Just to, you know, find a couple of them that you can connect with, and maybe Brandon. Um, if I have Brandon, if I want to get connected with him, I'm going to look at some of his recent activities. Um, is there anything that he had as a recent activity? He doesn't have much on his recent activity, but at least he gets that little notification. These are just some simple things that I'm showing you. The in-mail side, I'm not even getting to that. I'm not even trying to complicate you guys with all of that stuff yet. Um, but these are just some simple, simple, simple things that you can do. Uh, look at some of their, their skill set. Just look at some stuff about them. Um, he doesn't have a lot of activities here on LinkedIn. Uh, so, But again, those are some of the things that pop up. What's going to happen over the next day or so, next few days? They're probably going to say, who is this Donald guy? And come back and look, up, look at my profile, right? And when they look at my profile, I can initiate that process. So people are not looking at your profile. That's what you can do. And then also you can send out some messages. People who are first connection with you, um, second connection. So Dave knows somebody that I know. So I might look at that and I see that Jay, Dave knows a couple people that I know, 38 people we have in common. So I might say, Dave, send a little message out to him, connection request, and I want to connect with them. Um, and when you send a connection request, don't send a generic connection request. Sam, we're connected. Let me go back to john john wortman profile so if john and i were connecting for the first time i'm telling or let's just let me just show you this example so dave and i were connecting for the first time this is what pops up for linkedin it's going to say send a note um or just send the profile don't do that send a note make it personal so i might say dave blah 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 this is more chance this is a more chance likelihood of getting responded to than just the generic send not send but maybe I say something specific about him in that message. Um, Dave, I see that you also know Josh um, or you know Calf or whoever else we have as mutual connection. Um, would love to connect with you and learn more about on continue to learn more on LinkedIn. And we start a conversation. Maybe I went to Weber State University. Dave, I see that you went to Weber State as well. Um, see, we also have a couple friends in common. It would be an honor to connect with you and to you know continue to learn from you. So. Um, you can check that out. Don't do it from mobile. Can't customize. Yes, exactly on that one, Brian. It's very difficult. You can't customize on a mobile phone, but on the on somewhere on here, you can definitely send that 
uh, on LinkedIn. You can send a personal message on the desktop. All right. So what I do. So anyway, so that's how you can get people who haven't looked at you. So let me give you an example. This is real world example here. Um, totally legit. Not making stuff up here. So Laura, this is what she sent. She sent me a personal message. She was like, Donald, I started listening to your podcast last week and I'm hooked. I'm interested. Uh, I'm interested to follow on LinkedIn as well. Simple message. So somebody sent me that message. I'm like, yeah, great. So I personally responded to Laura, but you know what I do? I copy the same darn message and I might tweak it. I'll change it. Laura, it would be an honor to connect. I'm glad to hear you are hooked as well. That part I add, I tweak. So she knows that it's a, it's me responding because she said I'm hooked. So I went ahead and changed that one sentence. I'm so glad to hear you're hooked as well. Smiley face. Thanks for listening to the podcast. How did you find the podcast? My same generic question I ask, but it's personalized to them. P.S. Have you heard about our groups for sales professionals and salespeople and entrepreneur? Bam. I put the, both links there. And then she says, thanks for ad. Quickly, she responded to that. Um, I found it through a blog post where somewhere about the best sales podcast. I heard about the groups. I'll join one. Great. She went ahead. Wonderful. It would be an honor to have you join the groups. What do you love about the podcast? Then she went into talking about the podcast. Um, I'm newly, uh, I'm, well, I'm new to owning sales, so new to sales, which is great because that's my ideal people. What did I say at the top? New and struggling salespeople, right? Um, uh, most the experience from most the advice from experienced people. Had to admit the Indian fellow, she didn't like that episode. Great, we talked about that. It went on to talk even further, and I wanted to learn a little bit more about her. Um, then she said, then I asked, how did, how is business going for you? She said, business is okay. I'm new to sales. Second time she said that I've only closed one deal in my first month because I work for a startup. I have a lot to, a lot to do. And I'm currently building um, out partner programs, creating blah, blah, blah. So this girl is overwhelmed. She doesn't have any kind of process that she's following. My boss is confident that they will start to come through soon. And I work to keep in contact with them all the time, but I struggled with people not calling me back or replying to emails. Do I have content on that? Of course, I've shared with you guys some stuff for the past two weeks on follow-up, right? So now, because I engage in a conversation with, with her, I say I know exactly what you're going through. I hear this all the time with members I coach, which is true. If I was to jump on a call and share some ideas you and your boss could try, would you guys be interested? And then she's like, definitely interested. My boss, probably not so much. He's got a lot on his plate. Perfect. I learned a little bit more about the boss. So the, again, the business is, he's trying to focus on a business growth and there's a lot to do. She's one of the only few sales reps. Fair enough. What time zone? And the long story short, now we have a time zone set up and we have to confirm. So it's going to be, this is the time I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to give value on this conversation. What's your likelihood? What do you think the likelihood of her being a potential candidate for one-on-one -on -one coaching or sales training or even TSC Hustlers League? It goes up significantly, right? If I was like anybody else, I would just connect and say, oh, thank you so much for connecting on LinkedIn. No, ask simple generic questions that are personalized. These questions tie back to me. The questions I asked her, how did she hear about the podcast? She rattled off about that. Then I asked her, what is, how did, how's business going? She talks about how struggling she is. And then I asked, what is specifically you're struggling about? That, and she, well, she shared with me what specifically she's struggling about. And I asked, would you be open to jumping on a call? Great. Now I took somebody who was connection on LinkedIn to now somebody who's a potential lead for my business. Do you get where I'm going at, man? This stuff is fun. LinkedIn is so easy. So that's what I would recommend with you. This is my generic message. I copy and paste it every single time. I can show you a perfect example right now. I can utilize this with someone. Say I have a connection request. Do copy it. Go to my network. And Charles want said so this person say Charlene wants to connect. She's a top sales manager at top leads to people. That's probably a good company for me to get connected with. So this is what I'm going to do. I click on messages and then I go here and I put Charlene. I assume most of these people are finding me through the podcast and 99% of the times I'm right. Um, so I might say it will be an honor to, honor, honor to connect. Thank you so much for reaching out. And then to engage the conversation, um, how did you hear about the podcast? How did you find a podcast? Simple like that. I would send something like that. It would be an honor to connect. Thank you so much for reaching out. 
how did you hear about the podcast? P.S. Have you heard about our groups for sales professionals? Donald, I send that and then she's going to respond. Therefore, the conversation engages, the conversation starts, and that's how easy it is to do this LinkedIn stuff. It's powerful. I know we need to, we only have a little bit left, so I'm going to keep pushing forward. Share with you guys some ideas on Twitter here. Simple stuff you can do. What are the top keywords your prospect will use when searching for your product or your service? Same idea as LinkedIn. You have to know your keywords, right? And then I'm going to show you this advanced search here on, on, uh, on Twitter. This is where you start to see magic happens. This is where the magic happened, baby. I know, again, a lot of you are not necessarily – this is Canva. That's the tool. A lot of you are not necessarily spending tons of time on, uh, on Twitter. Um, but you can use it as a way to find people and a way to grab the attention. What I like to do, think of it like this. You start the conversation on Twitter, bring them over to LinkedIn. So start, let them, you know, you can grab, grab their attention, then bring them to over to meet with you on LinkedIn. So uh, let's say for instance, if I go to the search bar here, click on search and then let's say, I want to show you how to do it. Sales people or sales coach. Let's just do sales coach. Sales coach. I can't even miss my S there. So I'm just going to go over here to the filter. You see search filters, show the filters, and then I click on advanced search. Right? So then I can use different keywords. So maybe my keywords are. Uh, maybe let's say it's plumbing or let's, let's spell, that's not how you spell plumbing. Let me go to another one that I know is there. Let's say HVAC, HVAC, because I had some people that do this one. So all of these words written in whatever languages, and then I can do specific locations. So let's say Vernal, Utah. So anyone that tweet about that, and I can do date range, perhaps, let's say, within the past several months, say, from October 1 to now. Let's hopefully I can get something with, let's just put AC. I'm going to put that in search. So you have to do some different testing here because that one is this different AC. I'm going to do one for me. Let's do sale. Let's do construction. So anyone that has, I'm trying to help my vernal guys out there. Let's see if we can find some tweets on construction. New facility on the construction in the employee housing area, Dinosaur National uh, Monument. So the, I, they're doing some kind of new construction over there. It's a nice Chrome plugin for LinkedIn shortcuts for message templates. That's a great one. Thanks so much for sharing that, Brian. It's a great tool. Um, organic construction. There's so many different things he's talking about. Wow, incredible announcement on the construction. These are some different people who are posting different construction stuff. I can give you one. I post something recently in my area about like a conference that I was doing, right? And then someone came and uh, a local betting company. They said, Donald, are you from West Palm Beach? And like, yeah. And because I was just tweeting about my conference in West Palm Beach, and they were searching for people who were tweeting stuff in West Palm Beach. And they started a conversation with me. Now I'm thinking if I'm going to get a bed in a local company, guess who I'm going to go with? It's probably this company because it's just right there in the area. But if I start a conversation with this organization over here, and you know they're talking about dinosaur stuff, and I see the organization, maybe I could start tweeting some of their things and start liking some of their stuff and start to invent, start – Folks, I just want you to all know how much I love Star Trek. I can respond and say, you know, we love it over here at CEB as well. Whatever, you just you get the idea. So now the guys at CEB, they can start sharing a conversation, start the conversation. And once the conversation gets started, then you could push that person over to LinkedIn to continue going further. This is probably one of the key things that people don't take advantage of is the fact that you can use this advanced search to do things like that. That's the recommendation that I'll give you when it comes towards Twitter. It's just a simple, 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 easy thing if you're looking for ways to generate leads. Um, look for problems people have and try to offer solution via early stage content. So if I look up terms, again, you could do the same thing for rejection. Maybe fear of rejection. Fear of rejection. 
And then for me, I'm going to do wherever, remove location, and I'm just going to go search for it. So as a salesperson, and I know a lot of people have this fear of rejection, people are tweeting about fear of rejection. I might, if you have a fear of rejection, these are some people who are giving solutions to this, but maybe I have a piece of content. It's crazy how many people walk around with the fear of rejection and basing and basing their self-worth on the offense of others. So you use some swear words, they're colorful language. So I might say, you know, respond to something like that and say, yeah, I totally agree with you um, about that. Um, here's a piece that I have on fear of rejection. But you can find multiple different, uh, different content. You just find people who are talking about it. For a life filled with warmth, love, and affection, get past fear of rejection and desire for perfection. Say, totally agree with you there, man. Um, check out this blog post that I found. Uh, and I maybe I can share somebody else's blog post. Um, or maybe I can share mine at that stage. But if I share somebody else's, then it's great because then it's like, you know, this person is sharing content. It's not just self-gratifying. Um, I can just say, I totally agree with you. I love what um, Brian um, Higgins had to say about this topic um, with fear of rejection. Just check it out here. And I share a little tweet and commented on it. He's probably going to like it. He's going to look at my who I am. And then we're probably going to, I can probably re respond with him and then get him connected on LinkedIn. And then there's an opportunity to continue to grow. But that's, those are some of the things that I will share with you. Basic, basic stuff. But that's all you need to do. So when it comes down to it, meet them on Twitter. Invite them to connect with you on LinkedIn. Here's the LinkedIn strategy I'll give you. Search for five people who could be customers daily. This is a simple little three, four things you can do on your for your day-to-day -day Twitter stuff. Retweet their content. Engage with them like I did by asking a question. Invite them to connect on LinkedIn. That's all you need to do. Simple stuff. Easy peasy, beautiful cover girl. <laughs> but if you do that, do that there, I'm telling you, you'll see that you'll end up being successful oftentimes more than everybody else. Let me show you this last little strategy here for LinkedIn. For those of you who said you, you don't know how to use LinkedIn, need some help, do this. If you do this as your day to day, we'll spend 30 minutes a day on LinkedIn. Um, invite people to connect with you. What if you connect with five new people per day? That's nothing too difficult, right? Connect with five new people per day. Give three referrals per day. So what if I, or three referrals per week? Let's just keep it simple as that. What if I, or introduce people. It doesn't have to be a referral. But what if I know Brian is in construction and I know that my friends in, in rural Utah are in the, uh, also in the construction space. Say, hey guys, I know you guys are in different parts of the world, but I think you guys can connect and you can definitely, um, you know, learn from each other. So I might in, introduce Brian with my friends over at CEB and inter introduce them to Trent or something like that. Um, comment on one post and tag a connection. So maybe I comment on a post. Maybe Brian, somebody, I find a post out there on a topic related to whatever. Um, if there's a post on, let's see if I can go to our home profile and just try to find something real quick here to give you an idea. I, I did the perfect one today for my buddy Jared Easley. Um, these guys, not sure if you guys remember Jeffrey Gittimer. He was my episode number one. On my podcast episode, so Jeffrey had done a, they had a, a video out, and I t commented on a video, and I tagged my friend Jared easily on that video. That's so again, I'm engaging with with, get, with Jared. I'm just trying to find a way to reconnect with them, right? Um, invite people to connect with you for a phone call after you engage. So maybe I, um, the sales navigator is also worth the money to save search. Great point on that, Brian. Um, I told you guys about sales nav. It's like seventy eight dollars a month. But it's worth it. Right now, I, I use it intermittently, inter intermittently, but now I'm using just the basic version. Still seeing some amazing results with it. But it's the money is money is worth it for Sales Navigator. All of you, if you if you spend seventy eight dollars and you get a lead or get a customer that can buy one of your product, your product is probably going to be way more than seventy eight dollars. All right, and the last thing: post one to two blog posts per month. Personalize your invites and look for a profile of your ideal customer. If you guys try these things. You are going to see some amazing results. I want you guys to be successful. I ran over my time because I was just so excited about LinkedIn. It is a money, money, money tool, and uh, you can use you can use it to generate leads. I just showed with you a perfect example with my scenario there, how I'm utilizing it, and how it's helping me to get appointments and to chat with folks. All right, guys, I want you to connect with your accountability partner. We have three more sessions. Go back in and watch the recordings for these. They're going to be. They're going to be your tools to help you to become a little bit more successful with generating opportunities. Nothing will come unless you do the work, though. Nothing at all will come. So we can talk about this. 
and you can say it's great and this is great ideas, but you have to apply them. And I'm telling you, all of you, we can optimize and get your profiles just banging. So if you need help, just give me a send me an email, Donald at salesevangelist.com. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I want you to be successful, successful. I want you to be happy, but most importantly, I want you to go out each and every day and do big things. See you next week, guys.